Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we've got this 18 volt brush, this DCN 660 finish nailer. I put a full battery in it, as you might be able to see, and I'm going to show you what it's doing. So here goes nothing, it's not even ramping up. So I'm going to open, see what's going on inside. As you can see here, the pin's broken off. The, the pin should come out to about here. This thing with a number two on it. So that's broken. The springs sort of look all right at first glance. But we'll see how we get on. Move the driver, it involves taking out these two screws as well. There's a new pun there. You can see the difference. There's a fair bit broken off that. When we're in this far, I'm going to clean that wheel with contact cleaner, that little drive wheel that fires the driver forward. To do now is feed this driver unit onto these two long bars and springs there you see if to feed it on and this channel here in the bottom runs in that pulley wheel there that's what fires it forward That's running nicely in that channel now as you can see and we just got to put things back together. Ready of a full battery in her again, and we'll give her another whirl. That's looking pretty good. TD157. This was brought to me by a guy named Aaron, and Aaron had a problem with it. He had to go fixing it himself, which I would only encourage. Uh, he was trying to get this, this butt out, this butt that's stuck actually in the chuck. And he brought it to me and I said I'll fix it for him. Other than the uh, battery that the Levin Daylight said it drilled out, do whatever. I had a little small go at it but I thought I'm not going to spend loads of time on it. I had another idea. I ordered this part which is relatively cheap. And this part's all you need. Just replace that part and you have a fantastic job. If you um, want to see the part number that's it. 13638 1-7 very cheap to buy so he's already took the screws out for me and put them in this nice little pot which is very good in so all we need to do is take it apart it's here um, this actually screws off that's it now That'll come out like that, and you can see the O rings and alls on it. That's where you buy this part with the O rings and all on it. 
Blue Ranger actually a good idea in that part because the stops of grease run out of the front of the front of the tool, you know. It's actually not bad not bad design this. I just pushed it in with a strong screwdriver, it's not too bad. I'll put a little more grease in that I think. There's a little bit on there, that's the old part. Like I say that part was so cheap, there's no point in even having a, a beating session to beat it out. You just line that up, it's quite easy. And if you remember this is just a left hand thread, you just screw this on. But you need to make sure it's lined up here. It slots on tea. It's a little slot on the side. Look at this. It's a little fuse inside this. This is mad. This thing's not going to blow up. 10 amp fuse inside that. That's crazy. Never seen that before. I never had one of these open before this 157s. This is a very basic one. I think she's not a. She wouldn't be top of the range. Although, you know, it is brushless. Very small wee motor in that. Here we are. That's it together now. We've got to put the chuck back together. On these chucks, same in any drill and these unpacked drivers. Put a little bit of grease. Put a little bit of grease in around the little holes where the balls go. Some of these are single balls and some of them are double balls. In fact this one is two balls. This is I'll show you what I mean. There's the hole there. See what get good so you can see it. We well, put a bit of grease on there, and so that ball not fall out and get lost because these are very unique size to each machine. And if you lose them, you are you are finished. You have to you have to order more. There's not much to do the rest of it. Whatever they call it. Just lay that on over that. Little spring. Little washer here. And last but not least this ring. Sometimes these can be hard to get on. Sometimes you get them first time. Just depends on how lucky you are. So we'll see how my luck is today. Here we are now. Oh, that's good. That's good. I'm calling that fact. We have this Makita GA4530R 
Angle Grinder Gear Manufacturer 2021 and this this doesn't look right so I shouldn't even be plugging that in the state that's in but I'm going to plug it in to see if we can get it to go in any shape for more fashion let's see now no, that's not good anyhow we definitely need a new lead so we'll get into this and see what we can do First thing I see when I get in there, I see the brushes are done. So hopefully that's that's the whole problem. Hopefully that's it. Um, yeah. Not much left now. I think it's a new brush to see what I'm, I'm talking about. There's a new brush compared with the old brush. There's like nothing left. Well, anyway, and we'll repeat the process on our side. And it's definitely done too. That's the part number. If you're interested, in this model of grinder, and they're fairly standard and they're fairly cheap. up now. We need to change the lead.
Right, new brushes, new lead, new plug. Let's see if that was worth the effort. I'm going to plug it in and give it a whirl. I'm calling that fixed. Makita 18 volt battery and it's got this fault. See, there you are. The flashing alternate double light show. And it's showing 18.76 volts. Which right in the charger. And it's showing the fault lights. Sit in the tool. Let's do nothing for us. If you're experiencing this issue with your Makita battery, Replacing the board is the only option. I'm going to show you how to do so. You remove the screws from the bottom with the T10 Torx. Take off these things. And there's two screws here. You have to desolder all these points to get the board off. You just need a hot solder in there and sometimes a solder sucker. Just an empty melted off there. Got there. Yeah. This is a this will illustrate to you what crossing connections does, look. See? Don't do that. There we are. <clears throat> we have the old board off now. The new one is slightly different. But we might be able to get around that. The connections are in different places here and there. And there's a different sort of a battery indicator. But we might be able to get around that. I'm going to have to adapt this to set the board that we have. Cut these off. I'm only able to put one screw in because there, there's no position for the second screw here. There's no hole on the board in the right place. I suppose it's just time to make a few connections here.
it's a board fitted with uh, three connections that did fit and three that didn't basically. So there's one, two, three you had to fabricate but it's it's all good now. Um, next problem is this. This is a completely different setup than the, the one that was on it. But I think we can get around it. Down into position now. Um, but we need another part. So I'm going to have to... There's a white piece that goes on the end of these type of boards. That shows you the lights out here. In your, uh, in your battery charge. I'm going to have to take that off an old battery. Where, and because this is different, this battery is different. Um, it's tricky because uh, there's something. The housing is different slightly on this one. But hopefully. I just have to put the top on and hopefully all will be well with this lovely little battery. Two bars, that's that's pretty good. So we'll try it in the charger to see what happens. Oh I love it. So it looks like that's gonna charge. I'll give it some time and I get up to full charge. Here we are, we've got a green light in the charger, that's where we're waiting on, and we've got four bars on our battery. Check the voltage just to see how it came up. I was sitting at 18 point something. 20.2 volts and those of you that know know that that is a fully charged healthy battery now. Milwaukee 5.0 red lithium battery. It's showing no bars. It looks fresh as a daisy. But I'm going to try it in the charger to show you that it's anything but. We're getting the Milwaukee Christmas which would denote a faulty battery. And it's powering nothing. They put a voltmeter on it here. At the moment we're getting 0.23 of a volt. I measured it earlier and I got 0.48 of a volt, but it's gotten worse. The jump start has already been attempted in this and it doesn't work at all. But I'm gonna open it and go deeper to see. At the top of the battery there's no obvious broken connections there. We'll check this battery. We're getting 0.25 a volt in the first bank of cells. The second bank of cells no increase. No increase there. No increase there. No increase there. So really there's 0.25 in this front bank of cells and there's nothing in the rest so that battery pack is completely gone all the cells are completely kaput in it so if I want to save this battery pack what I have to do is replace all these as good old lady luck would have it I have 10 cells that I salvaged from this old 6 ampere flex volt 
that it took apart, they're all unbalanced, that was 2.81 volts. I charged them all up to 4.17 or 4.18. These are Samsung 20S's, which are not a bad sell. The only thing is, they'll make it, they'll make this battery into a 4.0 instead of a 5.0, which it was originally. But at the minute, it's a no.0, so 4 amps is better than no amps in my book. Still getting the flashing light. We're going to have to go for full circuit board replacement. Yes, circuit board replacement is our only choice with this one. Being the de facto battery doctor of the internet, I have one of these on hand, so it'll be just a matter of fitting it. Right, that's it all back together, showing four bars, which is what we want. And we'll put the voltmeter on it to see what kind of voltage we got. Get 19.7, 19.8 there, so that's very good. I'll put her on the charge to see how she does. Well, she's taking the charge anyway, so that's far better than she was. That should achieve full voltage. And we'll try on a drill. I'm calling that fix. Look at this Parkside 20 volt team battery. It's a 4 amp hour, but it's not feeling very well right now. It's got one red light showing. And if you put it on the charger, it's showing the faulty lights. Check it in the voltmeter, it's coming to 2.4, 2.5 volts. So that's a 20 volt battery when it's fully charged. So 2.4 volts is not great. So have a battery showing a very low volt like that, <coughs> you usually have to bring the voltage up somehow and the jump start method is usually the go to for everyone. But I would always recommend you open the battery and check the individual banks of cells before we go storming in. So we'll just get this battery open here now. Just take the top off here now. And we can examine them individual banks of cells, check the voltage. 
So if you recall, we're getting 2.4 volts across the whole battery, which is sort of that, isn't it? 2.6, it says now, Jesus mind. Half a volt in that bank of cells, half a volt in that bank of cells, about half a volt in that bank of cells, half a volt in that bank of cells, and last but not least, about half a volt in that bank of cells as well. So that's where your 2.5s come on out of. It's getting about half a volt in every bank. Most people will tell you that, that when once the battery gets that low, it's finished anyway, but that's not the case. Sometimes you can recover these with a jump start. That's connecting another live battery, fully charged battery to it, and bringing up the voltage. However, there can be risks with this. You can actually burn out some of your cells, overheat them, and then they pop, and they're, and they're goners. So there is a much more milder and safer way to do this. And I'm going to show you what it is today. This is what's called a DC power supply or bench power supply. Uh, it's a plug-in to your ordinary electricity and it puts DC voltage out the leads. So you can charge things like this battery. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring up the voltage of the battery with this. What we're doing is we're hooking this up to the power supply. And we'll set it for 19 volts. And we're going to just push the button and let her start charging. And we're going to come back to her later when she's sort of there covered. It's only been a couple of minutes and I hooked up the voltmeter to check how the little battery's doing. And it's come up to 15.66, it's going up all the time. It won't be long till it reaches about, I would say about 17, 17 and a half and then the battery should be able to be charged then. So a relatively short time has passed and it's come up to 17.19 and climbing. So I might take this off and put it in the charge to see what happens. So here we are, we'll reassemble this and uh, get it on the charge quickly. Let's get this in the charge, see what happens this time. And it's charging. So we'll leave that on a while to see if it takes a full charge. This is still charging away. And it's showing the full bar, so we'll take it off and give it a little test to see what the voltage is like and how well it recovered. We'll be optimistic and put it to the higher range. Hopefully it'll be over 20. Yeah, 20.5 20 shots, that's perfect. Maximum voltage there. You see it's staying stable, it's not dropping either, like, so that's pretty good. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for all my other videos.